Amen. Father God, thank you so much for bringing us together yes. as the body of Christ to worship you this morning. Thank We're going to rejoice in you today. We're going to celebrate your goodness and your love, and we just dedicate this beautiful day to you. In Jesus' mighty name, let's worship you. Whoa. We're going to get psychedelic today. Bring it in. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. Okay, what's going on? Oh, shoosh. For a while there, I thought we are going to get down freaky. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All the chains are broken, and I have been set free. And every word you spoken is watching over me. So how can I stay silent when I hear you call my name? be the same and I No. 
Oh, thank you, Father, for your love. We thank you for your love, Lord God.
compares to your love for us, Lord. Nothing in this world compares to your love for us, Lord.
You lead me beside the still waters. You restore my soul. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to get your elements together. Father, we thank you. I want you to say this, Heavenly Father. So grateful for your love that you are willing to give up your own son for me. Thank you that he was bruised, that he was broken, pierced, just like wheat that's broken so that we can get bread. He was, he was broken so that I could have life. So could have life. He's my manna, He's my, manna. My, bread my bread of life. He bore all my sickness. He bore all my, he bore all my pain. He bore all my and thank you that by his stripes, I am healed. to say this, take the cup, Heavenly Father, thank you for the blood, just like grapes are smashed and eventually become new wine, Jesus was bruised and his precious blood gave me new life, new spirit, I'm alive, I'm forgiven, I'm delivered. All because of the blood, I am free, and I want to thank you for that in Jesus' name. Go ahead, partake. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you go ahead? Bucket's going to come by. You can put the rest in there and go ahead and greet one another, love each other in the Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> well, good morning, church. Good to see everyone here this morning. We see some new faces. If this is your first time at Grace, we just want to say welcome to the family of God. Amen. We hope that you got a visitor packet. If you didn't, on your way out, please make sure that you get one because we have a gift inside there for you. And you could redeem it at the cafe today, okay? So we'd like for you to do that. But we're thankful on behalf of Pastor and I and the Grace Church family here. We want to say welcome to all of you that are here visiting us today. Um, I just want to remind you that next uh, Sunday we are having our Harvest Fest for the kids. We've asked you to bring candy, snacks, so forth. And so next Sunday, the kids, during the second service, they will be having their crafts, their Harvest Fest in the building and so forth. So they won't be going outside doing all the games and so forth. This year, it's just going to be inside the building, okay? And then um, also today after service, uh, first of all, I want to thank Rick Pacheco. I don't know if he's still here or if he left already, but... I want to thank him. He's the one that made all the food today for the youth conference, uh, the food that's going to be sold today for and is going towards our youth conference. And it's uh, red chili, rice beans, macaroni salad, and some dinner roll and a drink for $10. Now, if the kids don't want the chili and they just want the rice and beans, then we're going to sell it for $5, okay, with the drink, that they can have the drink as well. Uh, and so that's going on today. Also, Wednesday, we have the young adults and the men's group that meet on Wednesday nights at 7. Thursday, Miss Patty's group. And then, of course, ladies, this Saturday is our last um, uh, group for the year for Women of Grace because in November, it falls right after um, Black Friday. And so I know y'all won't be coming to group. You guys will be <laughs> shopping. So I'm not going to have it in November, and we don't have it in December. And so... That's all. Oh, one thing I did want to encourage uh, for those of you that are watching and those that are here this morning, it just like the scripture just popped in my spirit this morning and I just felt impressed to read it to you. And so I, I pray that this blesses you this morning. It's in Mark uh, 923 in the TPT. It says, Jesus said to him, what do you mean if, if you are able to believe all things are possible to the believers? Amen. I believe that there's some of us that, you know, we, we start off believing God for things, but then after a while we sort of, when we don't see anything, we sort of tend to doubt a little bit and we say, okay, God, I know you promised me these things, but we don't see them. But here he's saying, if you are able to believe, don't let the enemy steal your belief. Amen. Don't let him take that belief. If God promised you something, he will give it to you because he says all things are possible to the believer. Amen. And I don't know about y'all, but in my, in right here in my Bible, it's in red. And that means that this is Jesus speaking to you. Amen. So Jesus is telling you that all things are possible. Amen. So we're thankful for that. Pastor John. Amen. We have a mic. Glory to God. Well, if you weren't here for the first service, the mic wouldn't work. So we had a shout, you know, so. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to go ahead and receive our offering. So anyone that needs an envelope, please raise your hands. The ushers will hand you one or two or three or however many you need. Amen. Amen. I'm going to share a scripture with you. Turn to somebody. Give them that big old smile. All right. Never mind. It says, every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. Now turn to your other neighbor and smile again. All right. Glory to God. He loves a cheerful giver. It's time to be cheerful. Amen. It's time to be cheerful. God is doing something good, something great in your life. Amen. God has been a blessing to you. Amen. And he's going to continue to bless you. You know that God's going to bless you even if you don't give. He's still going to bless you because that's who our God is. Amen. But you know, you, you get to the point in your life that you want to give because how much God has blessed you. Amen. It's like, I just want to give. Amen. So raise up your offering to the Lord. Believe God in your home. Believe God over your finances. Amen. Remember that he's our source, not your job. He's your source. Amen. 
thank God for your job, but God is your source. So raise it up, Father. We thank you, Lord God. We give you all glory and honor, Father, and all praise, Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that the church, Grace Church, is a blessed church, Lord God. And I thank you that all the needs of the church are met. We thank you that all the needs to complete the the youth building are coming in, Father God, and we thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you that every family here, as they give, Father God, and those that are that can't give, Father God, that you will bless them, Father God, continually bless them in their home, Lord God, that all their needs are met. So we thank you, Father. We give you all glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said, amen, amen. amen. God bless you as you give. There we go. Turn myself on there. Amen. Thank you again for your faithful giving. Just that, while we're at it, talking about it, just a quick update. First of all, if you're visiting, thank you for visiting. I'm Pastor Manuel. We are finishing up our youth office wing. Uh, we just actually got uh, the 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 final on the actually the final in the building was done on Thursday, so it passed flying colors and and uh, the and the inspector was really impressed with the building. He says we need more of this for young people. He said it. I didn't say it. He said it. We need more of this for young people, he said, um, uh, and uh, was really, really blessed by it and so forth. So thank, thank you so much for giving. Now, uh, everything else is passed except for the fire hydrant. We have to get that in. It's, go it's going to be put in Wednesday. Then I can turn in the certificate of occupancy permit thing, and hopefully within 8, 10 days we should have the occupancy permit. Then we'll be able to move in, praise God. So we'll be, we're, we're getting there. We, anything else that's coming in right now? Um, is uh, we got to buy a refrigerator and freezer for you know for, for for use and that way we can put our ice and all that other so a few more things we have to get in there but it's just about there it's almost done and and uh, in, and we'll have a, a grand opening right now it looks like it might be the first or the second uh, Sunday of uh, of November where we'll have like a, our grand opening uh, celebration for for that so we'll let you go in there and check it out maybe play a little bit of air hockey and uh, soccer. I already, I already beat Cecil two times in, in, in uh, not soccer, foosball. Anyway, but uh, yeah, but it's fun. It's, it's, it's fun, but it's a blessing. So we're excited. You know, when we do things, you know, I remember I had a friend of mine from high school. She came and visited us before we did the other buildings. And she's, you know, it's nice. Well, the way you did it, it's not a Taj Mahal, but it's still nice. It's still good. It's still, you know, you know what I'm saying? We, we use our funds wisely. And, uh, and, and so forth to build the best that we can with the funds, but we don't also go crazy in building like a Taj Mahal to try to attract, you know, but we're trying to do nice to attract uh, youth and so forth, so I think youth will really enjoy that. I think the young adults will really enjoy it, and uh, maybe us on <coughs> Sunday. <coughs> if, if, the, if, the, if the Super Bowl's real bad, you know, I can play you guys hockey. Anyway, but uh, thank you again for your giving in that, and, and so we're getting close. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Praise God. You're so cute. Anyway, well, in that, uh, she's the intro to the baby dedication. We're, we have a baby to dedicate this morning from uh, Wesley and Clarissa. So if you guys would like to come up, and anybody else that's going to come up with you. Um, you, you know what? Can you, you'd have to go through that door right there to go up to the stairs. It, yeah, it, yeah. I don't want you to fall with the baby. So, so you guys could go right through that door right there, and you'll you'll be guided right in here. I'm just gonna move this a little bit so they don't step on it. Baby dedication. Amen. Come on in, you guys. State your name for everybody here. What's your name? I'm Rebecca. Rebecca, and of course. Wesley. And Clarissa. Clarissa. And? Ben. Ben, thank you guys for being here. And this is? Wesley Jr. Wesley Jr. Wesley Jr. Hi, Wesley. Look at him. Look at him. That's a photo shoot right there. All right. 
So listen, baby dedication, what is the baby? Let me share a couple things that I want you guys to know and for everybody here to, to hear. Uh, through your children, you're going to pass on everything that God has given to you. So baby dedication, even though, yes, we're dedicating the baby to the Lord, but it's also really a dedication of you as parents to what? To raise up and train up your child in, 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 in the way that God wants him to go for the purpose and the destiny that you have for him. Amen? So as parents... You know, you know it, that's our responsibility to guide our children and lead them in the ways that they should go so that they can fulfill God's destiny for their lives. Amen? Each generation has a responsibility to pass on the truth they learned and pass it on to the next generation. And that's why it's so vital, the family unit is so vital, and, and raising kids that believe in God is so vital. See, that's what the enemy does on the opposite side. That's why you see what's happening in the Middle East. There's kids that are being trained with machine guns and stuff to hate. Listen, no. That's, you know what I'm saying? That, that's what's the problem in the Middle East. That's why that's happening. So we're here to train him to do God's will for his life because th- his life will then be blessed and so forth, so on. So as you dedicate your child to the Lord, you are actually dedicating yourselves as parents to help your child mature and fulfill his divine destiny. Just like Hannah presented her baby to the Lord and even Joseph and Mary after eight days brought Jesus to the temple to dedicate him to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so that's, that's what we're doing. So, so as a parent though, to dedicate your child to the Lord and to commit yourselves to the proper nurture of the child, I want you to answer these things with we will to the following statements. Will you train your child in the way that he should go According to Proverbs 22, 6. Okay. Will you show your child the God kind of love? According to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Will you raise your child in the training and instruction of the Lord, not provoking him um, him to wrath? According to Ephesians 6, 4. Will you teach your child the principles of the word of God and show him the value of those principles? According to Deuteronomy 6. And... Will you be an example to your child of how to live victoriously through the promises contained in God's word, according to 2 Corinthians 1.20? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, for you, as as the the eyewitnesses of this dedication, uh, as the church, I want you to go ahead and rise. The parents are not alone in this dedication. Amen. In fact, you help assist in raising this child but by what? By helping us to build that children's wing so the child can begin to learn about God and the things of God at a young age. Everything that's been laid out in this campus is laid out with them getting a revelation of God's grace and love for them because that's where it starts. Grace comes first. And then even the prodigal son, you know, some people say he repented when he was, he was going to his dad. No, no. The only reason he went back home, he says, I had it better when I was at my dad's. I ate better than eating pig's food. Amen? And, uh, and then, then this luau that I was in, the, in the pigs. Anyway, so, so he, he said, I'm going to go to dad's house where I can eat better. So that wasn't really repentance. That was just like, man, I have it bad off. It was better at dad's house. It wasn't until what? When dad saw him and ran to him and hugged him. That's grace. Come on. Accepted him because he, really, he was ready for his confessions of sin. Dad. I'm not worthy. I'm no good. I don't even deserve to be called your son. And dad didn't even listen to him. Go get the fatted calf. Go get the, go get his, go get, you know, the, 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 it's like the breastplate of right. Go get his gown. Go get his feet. He's still my son. No matter, you know, it, so, so it was grace. I believe repentance happened to that prodigal when his dad hugged him and melted in his arms. And I'm sure after that, oh, he's like, man, what did I do? Come on now. It's love. And so, and so we have a responsibility, too, as a family to help this family in raising the child by what? By supporting the children's ministry, by praying for them, by your support here at the church. You're able to help them, too. Amen? So we will prov- I, after I say these statements, I want you guys to say amen. Those of you that come from a Catholic church, you'll probably enjoy this. <laughs> we will provide godly... <laughs> We will provide godly examples for the child through our words, our actions, and our lifestyles. If so, you say, by supporting the nursery, the children's, and the youth programs, we will help meet the child's needs spiritually, socially, physically, mentally, and emotionally. 
Now I feel like a priest. Okay. We will encourage the child to reach her full potential to fulfilling his divine destiny. Amen. Amen. And we will support the parents and the child in prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. Amen. Well, now we're going to dedicate him to the Lord. Uh-oh, he fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi there, Henry. <laughs> what's his middle name? Henry. Oh, what's his first name? Wesley. Oh, so Wesley's his first name then. Wesley, Wesley. Wesley Henry. Carter. 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 Oh, man, you guys look Hispanics, man. <laughs> we give them all kinds of names. <laughs> Wesley Henry Carter. Here is Wesley. Look at him. Wesley Henry Carter Jr. I'd be happy, too, if I had that chupi. <laughs> Father, let's pray. Thank you so much for Wesley, Father God. Wesley Henry Carter Jr. Thank you for this precious, precious life that you gave to this precious family. And Lord, he's a gift from you. And Lord, we dedicate Henry Wesley back to you, Lord. We give him back to you. He is your child. And Father, we speak a blessing over Wesley, over his precious life. We ask that your angels would watch over him all the days of his life. We pray, Father, you would place within his heart a desire to seek you, to do your will, to serve you, and to love you. May he get a revelation of your grace and love as he grows up and hears it from the church and from his parents about your goodness, about your love. And we pray, Father, that, that Wesley will be used for your glory. We ask that your angels watch over him all the days of his life. Surely goodness and mercy will follow Wesley all the days of his life, and he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He is yours, and, and Father, we ask for your keeping grace to keep him all the days until he sees Jesus face to face. Thank you, Father. We give him to you, and we speak your blessing over Wesley. In Jesus' name, amen. He's like, Pastor... Pastor, you almost put me to sleep. But now he woke up. What's up? What's up, Wesley? You all right? You're getting sleepy. You're getting sleepy. There go the chupi moves. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. And let me pray over you guys. Father, I pray for the parents and those here assisting, Father. I just speak, we speak blessing over them. Give them supernatural grace. And lead them by your spirit and any decisions that they're going to have to make for Wesley as he's growing up. May they be led by your spirit, Father, to do the right thing so that he will fulfill your purpose and your plan for, their, for his life. And we just thank you for gracing them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Congratulations. Amen. God bless, God, bless you. God bless you guys. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh-huh. And hold on. Uh, let me give you this. This is yours. This is a little this is a little certificate that has his uh, that has his little uh, name back here and you can put a photo of him okay. and so forth so when he was dedicated and stuff. Okay? okay. Thank you so much. All right. And here's the cover for it. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. God bless. Amen. That was fun. Amen? We need some more babies. <laughs> if you can't win them, make them. We've got to grow the church. We've got to grow the church, so. Right? <laughs> That's what. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, well, listen, before I get into the word this morning, I, have, I do have uh, one more thing I want to do. I want to ask uh, Pastor Eric if you can come up for a second. I don't know if Scott can watch it for a little bit, Eric. And then uh, um, Pastor Linda, come on up. And Pastor John, and of course, Ruby, if you're watching, you're part of it. Pastor John, come on up. Listen, it's, it's been, you know, we've been celebrating Pastor's Appreciation uh, Month, and I want to, Pastor Lucy and I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all your gifts, your, your notes, your kind words, your, your, everything that you did for us. We really appreciate it, and thank you for that. And the chocolate, too, that I got, and, and everything, and the cake, oh my God. 
Yeah, you know, put it in the mic for a few seconds and get a glass of milk, amen. Anyway, but um, it, was such, it was such a blessing for you guys. And I especially enjoy what the notes we get from the kids, from the, especially when they say thank you so much for, that we can learn about God here in this place. Is, uh, that blesses me very much, and, and we're so grateful for that. But listen, I also want to honor our, our associate pastors, our pastors here that, that, that have been, uh, the, I know Pastor Andrew and Vanessa, we, uh, Vanessa was gonna, not going to be here, so we honored them in the first service. But I just want to, uh, you know, it's, it's pastor's appreciation. So we also want to honor not just us, but also the other pastors. So, you know, Pastor John and, and Ruby wasn't able to make it this morning, but, you know, I've known Pastor John for a long time, and, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that if I, ha you know, have to do something, that he can step up and minister and help and everything. Of course, helps us with the offerings and, and really whatever he needs. Sometimes I've seen him running the, the Gracie, the transportation, and whatever needs to be done, Pastor John and Ruby, of course, Ruby has helped too and uh, helped in there with the youth and other things, decorating and everything. So, blessing. And then, Eric, you know, what were you, 11 years when you started coming to our church? Yeah. He was 11 years old when, we started the, when he started coming to our church. <laughs> he was a little pink. And he's been with us, so yeah, for, for 20, whatever, 20 years. Yeah, and so, and grew up, he went through the youth group. He went up through the youth group and everything. And now he's, you know, pastor for the young adults and uh, has served in many capacities all over. Amen. From, we appreciate everything he does. Now he's been helping with the live stream, of course, and, and uh, help, you see him help with the bass. And, amen. Sound, everything, he's, he's done it all. Amen. Go for this, go for that, go for, amen. Done it all. Yeah. A gopher. That's what and then and then Linda here, Pastor Linda here has been helping us with her youth and and taking off in that. She also used to assist with the school, at Grace Life University and so forth. But now has taken upon helping with the youth and been a blessing. So we appreciate our pastors, and so we wanted to bless them with a little, just something they can go out, enjoy dinner, or do something and have some fun. So Pastor John, and and Ruby, if you're watching, God bless you guys. Thank, thank you, you so much for your for your help, Eric. Thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Amen. And Linda, Thank God bless you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Amen. Amen. We appreciate them too. Amen. There was a guy when we used to go to Rama. He was an usher, and uh, he would always be. Uh, he would he would shake your hand and appreciate ya. Remember him? We that's what we. Hey, Mister, appreciate ya. I, I appreciate ya. Cha, cha, cha. cha. I appreciate you. Are you ready for the word? Yes. Amen. Let's get, let's get in the word. I'll, I won't try to go long. Listen, after we're done, amen, you, we're going to have the, the food's going to be in the back, in the Ramada. So if you can hang out, fellowship. Why go to the restaurant when you can go here, be a blessing to the youth, and eat some homemade red chili. What else? Rice, beans, and... Ah, I love macaroni salad. It's one of my favorites. Macaroni, you know. So, so stay with us. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we get into the Word, I ask for the Holy Spirit to give me utterance and to share the truths you want me to share, Father. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, today, I mean, those that know me and whatever, I, I do so many series. You know, we've taught verse by verse through the book of Revelation. We've, we've, we, did, we just finished a series on, on living the 5G rated life of God's grace, goodness, gospel, and glory, how to stand strong in those areas. And so I, I like, I'm a teacher, so I like to teach in series and, and cover things really good. But today I only have one message. Amen. What, what, it's, it's pretty rare, so, so in, enjoy it because it's only one message. Amen. It, <laughs> it's, it's one page and one Sunday, right? Anyway, listen, uh, I want to talk to you about the title of this message is Simplify. Simplify, Why? Because time is short. Simplify because time is short. In fact, the scripture that I'm going to read from you is from 1 Corinthians. Let me give you the background of the scripture. That scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 is really, Paul is trying to answer a question that was written to him by the Corinthians about, because you see, Corinthians, Corinth, Corinth was a very secular city. You could say it was like the Las Vegas of today, but worse. They used to have Olympics in the nude there. And, uh, and uh, uh, it, was, it was a real, uh, there was, there was uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of idolatry and, and harlotry and, 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 and going on. They, they should have, you know, uh, worship temples where, where sex was, uh, was a part of it. Anyway, 
And so, so you know, they were asking him, well, you know, is sexual morality, what's wrong? Oh, yeah, if you, anybody needs the notes for today, raise your hands. We got some extra ones. Raise your hands, they'll get to you. There's some things you can fill in in there. Just raise your hands, and you'll get the notes that I share. I like to give you the notes of what I'm sharing on Sunday. So if you need one, raise your hands. Um, so anyway, so they ask him, hey, is it good for, you know, the area of sexual immorality? Is it okay to have sex? Basically is what they were asking him. And, he, and Paul answers in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, he says, because of the issue of sexual immorality, he says, that's why he says, it's good for a man to have his own wife and for a wife to have his own woman. Why? He says, because sexual intimacy can be what? Huh? What? Is that what I said? Oh, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, take that back. Take it off the tape. <laughs> anyway, I meant a man to have his own wife and a wife to have her own husband. <laughs> People are going to start leaving the church here in a little bit, right? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> listen, listen, w why? He says, because he says in marriage is where sexual intimacy can be contained correctly and operated correctly. It, marriage, it's like fire. I mean, sexual, sexual intimacy, uh, again, out of marriage can, can cause issues and, and, and burn and cause problems. So it was designed to be in marriage. Why? Because that's where it can be controlled and done in a right way. Now, now again, God is the one that, does, that created sex. Amen? It wasn't the devil's idea. Amen? It's like the, the, somebody asked the pastor, well, it, well it, it, you know, if... It, if it's so bad, why does it feel so good? You know, you know, it's just they're just being. That's what they feel. You know, sex is is something that God created, but it was designed to be between a husband and a wife. Amen. Come on. Now, now God designed it that way. So Paul's trying to answer that question. He says, in fact, he says it's better for you to marry than to burn with lust. Now there's, and, but he told him, but he, but because Paul was you know single, he said, but yet listen, for you that are single. If you can live a single life and not have sexual intimacy and you know, you're okay with that, it doesn't bother you and you can live that way, go for it. That's fine. Why? He says, you know why? Because you're going to have less distractions than those that are married. Because if you're married, he says, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. Can anybody testify? <laughs> and you get married, you're going to have some trouble in the flesh. Why? Because when you're single, it's all about you. It's all about do you and the Lord and everything. But when you're married, hey, it's not just about me. I got to ask, you know, I got to ask the boss what's going on here. <laughs> Amen. What's going on? Amen. Right. And so and so Paul was trying to, to explain that. But here's the thing, though. He, he's, he's, he's trying to explain. You see, and some people, Pastor, you mean to marry? It's, yeah. If, if you have an issue and you can't control yourself sexually, then you need to go find some, uh, uh, somebody of the opposite sex eventually and get married. Otherwise, you're going to burn with lust. Amen? I'm telling you, this is what the Bible says. Is you're saying that's one of the reasons to get married? Yes, but hopefully you love the one you're with. You got to love the one you're with. Love the one you're with. Don't, don't marry just for that. You should, you should love the one you marry. Amen? Amen? That's like the guy, it's like the guy that said, love, you know, marry somebody you don't love, and that way if they do stupid things or whatever, it doesn't bother you. Why? Because you don't love them anyway. <laughs> don't do that, okay? <laughs> marry somebody you love. Amen? And love them with God's love. So, see, so, so Paul was trying to, you know, dealing with that issue, and he was pretty blunt. He says, hey, spout wife, that body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to your husband. Husband, that body doesn't belong to you either. It belongs to your wife. Take care of each other. Why? If you don't take care of each other at home, somebody else will take care of them somewhere else. This is not a marriage session, but I'm just trying to explain the background to what we're going to get into. It's in that context that persecution started coming into the church. And it was starting to get rough and tough. And so Paul, in the midst of counseling them on marriage, he brings this up. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 7. And verse 29. But uh, this I say, brethren, to the ones that he was telling all this stuff about whether, you know, married, single, and so forth, so on. But this I say, brethren, 
The time is what? And that's, that's why I'm talking about this. The time is short. Listen, I've been teaching, I've hit, I did a whole, what? Remember what? Those of you that were here, I taught verse by verse through the whole book of Revelation. Those of you, if you want to learn more, it's in my YouTube page. Go there, you can see it. Verse by verse. I even did a pamphlet this thick with all my notes, and for five bucks we gave it to anybody who wanted it. We gave about 75 or more out. It's there. You know, it's for you to learn and grow and whatever. But we're, I believe we're living in the last days before the return of Jesus Christ. I remember when we started this church back in 2000, I told the church back then, hey, listen, we're an end times church. What do you mean, Pastor? I believe this church is existing up into the return of the Lord Jesus. We're an end time church uh, that Jesus is going to come in our time. And that was 23 years ago. And listen, you think I think less? It's greater in me. Look at what's going on in the world. It's greater in me. It's, it's getting stronger in me that his return is closer than people realize. And Paul's tell, and notice, Paul had that attitude, even with the Corinthians, telling them, hey guys, time is short. So notice, they always had an attitude that Jesus could come at any time. You should always have that attitude in life that you live your life that, you know what, God, the Lord Jesus could come at any time. Technically, there's no other Bible prophecy that needs to be fulfilled for Jesus to, to, for the rapture of the church, to be honest with you. Why? The rapture of the church could happen, and right away, Ezekiel 38 and 39 could come on the scene, where Russia and... Are you seeing what's happening in the Middle East right now? Who are the enemies of Israel? Right now, Russia is getting more an enemy. Ira, Iran, which is Persia, that's Ezekiel 38, 39. Who else? Turkey is starting an enemy of Israel. Syria and, 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 and so forth. All, all these nations that Ezekiel 38, 39 talk about that is going to attack Israel from the north, they're already being lined up and set up. And so when the church gets raptured, and see right now we're defending Israel. But in the Bible, Ezekiel 38, 39, when that World War III happens, it, it says that the U.S. is nowhere to be found. Pastor, why do you think that? Because I believe we will be raptured and most of the Christians, well, the Christians that, that are, a lot of Christians that are, you know, all the, that are Christians will be raptured, gone. And so this nation will diminish. It won't be a powerhouse anymore in the last days. Because we'll be, a, a majority of Christians, the, the, all the Christians will be gone. And so we won't be able to protect Israel. And so therefore Russia and, and Turkey and, I mean, and, and, and Iran, oh, they got the free line to go ahead and take a spoil, it says, to take oil and gas that Israel now has. Right? And so you, you're seeing the setup. We're in the last days. We're in the last days and we're, and we're starting to see things line up and so forth. And, uh, and let, me, let me bring something else out too, though. It amazes me in what I'm seeing happening is our culture, especially, listen to me, younger generation, <laughs> a lot, <laughs> you're being fed lies about, the, about Palestine and Hamas, and they are flat-out lies. Know your history. Know your history. Uh, uh, Israel has, has had the land way before any Hamas, Palestine, whatever it was. They were the, the ones God gave them personally, a, 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 a command to Abraham, I'm giving you this land. And guess what? It was from the Euphrates all the way to the sea. They didn't even get the whole land. It, it, was, it was a big portion from Euphrates to the sea. And then, and then what happened, see, in the 1850s, after thousands, thousands of years of being desolate, after, you see, Pastor, why, was is, why is Israel desolate? Why? why? Because they rejected Jesus. So, so God allowed the Romans to come in, destroy in 70 AD, destroy Jerusalem and everything, and the Jews were scattered throughout the whole world, and the nation of Israel was no more. Why? A rejection of their Messiah. But God promised in Ezekiel 36 and 37 that he, in the last days, before Jesus comes back physically, he will bring them back to the land and they're going to build the temple. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? They're going to build the temple. Why? Because when we're gone during the rapture, there's seven years left of Old Testament where God's going to deal with the Jewish people to get them ready for their Messiah. And he's going to judge the world for all the evil things that they did. But we have to be out of here, the church. Why? God never judges the righteous with the unrighteous. See, Paul says we are the righteousness of God in Christ. 
For God to judge, some people, th listen, there's teaching that's coming out today that is saying that we're going to go through the tribulation. Even people that I know that are now saying, they, 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 you know, oh yeah, we read the Apocrypha, and now, now they're, adding, they're adding to the Bible. Listen, anytime somebody starts adding to the Bible and gives extracurricular uh, you know, material, I'm sorry, watch out, watch out, you're going to be deceived. And so now they're saying, you know, the Apocrypha, well, no wonder they believe then that they're going through the tribulation. They're one of the reasons the Apocrypha wasn't, wasn't added because there were some things in there that didn't line up with the rest of Scripture. Paul says, even if an angel preaches a different gospel than I preached to him, to you, let him be accursed. If I were to come up as your pastor and, hey, I had a vision, had a dream, but my vision and dream does not line up with the Bible, I would ask you to please leave. I'll say that again, like Paul said it again. If I or an angel, if I had a dream or anything, and it does not line up with Scripture, you better leave. That's why our culture today is accepting what it's accepting with what's going on and whatever. Well, it's just, you know, that's just the way it is. Listen, you can judge and say something is wrong without judging the person. A lot of times when you say, well, that's wrong, or you're judging me. No, I'm not judging you. Your action that you're doing is wrong, but, but I'm not judging you. God is going to be your judge in what you believe. But as far as what you're doing, see, you can judge somebody. You can still love them and still say what you're doing is wrong. See what I'm saying? Why do we think that, oh, you hate me because you're judging my action? No, I don't hate you. I love you. And because I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. The Bible says we're supposed to speak the truth in love. Amen? It's just like, I've used the illustration, it's like the bridge is out, and you know it's out, but, but here's, you see cars coming, and you say, come on down the road, yeah, come on, come on. But you don't love them. If you love them, you tell them, stop in the name of the Lord before you fall. Think it over. Amen. That's my comedian call. In case I fail as a pastor, I'll become a comedian. That's what one of my church people said that. Well, pastor, it's pretty good. If you fail being a pastor, you, you, can, you can be a comedian. <laughs> Listen, and some of you think that I'm making this up. Talk to my wife. Right, hon? And, and that's sad because she doesn't enjoy my jokes. So I have to give them to you guys. I miss Sister Frances. I remember, remember Sister Frances. She'd be, ha, 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 ha. I miss her, man. She's in heaven now, but she used to laugh at my jokes. It was really good. Anyway, I, I just, that's just who I am. I'm just goofy. A little, I'm a little bit goofy. Okay? So listen, in, in all seriousness, though, talking about a serious topic, sometimes I want to inject things because, you know, we're, this is serious. Time is short, Paul says. Let's go back to that scripture. But here, here, here's, here's, let me finish by saying this, though. Israel, in the 1850s, Mark Twain, uh, I forgot what year, 1870, I forgot what year he visited Israel. And you know what he said? It's desolate. It's ugly. There's nothing here. So see these, uh, the, the, the Palestinians and Hamas saying that, oh, no, this is our land. We were here first. Listen, God gave them the land 2,000 years, 2,000 years before, before Jesus came. And besides, when Mark Twain went there, he said, it's desolate, there's nothing here. It wasn't until the Jews started coming in the late 1800s, and especially after the Balfour Agreement in 1917, when the, when the, when the, after World War I, British took over the land from the Turks, and they designated the land for the Jews. But then the Arabs said, where's our land? So they cut, I think it was um, that guy from Britain, um, Scott... Uh, Went, I forgot his wood. I forgot his name. Huh? Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, he cut the land in half. Jordan. He said, "Okay," and he called it Trans Jordan. So he gave the Arabs Jordan and Israel this little area. The Muslims got ninety nine point all that land all around, and Israel's got less than one percent of all that land, and they still want that. Listen, people, with Hamas and Palestine, you can't do a treaty with something somebody that wants you dead. How can you do a treaty with somebody that doesn't want peace with you? They don't want peace with you. They want you gone. They want you dead. They think that's their land. 
But listen, you know what happened is the Jews started coming back and God promised in Ezekiel 36 that he would flourish the land and bud it and it would flourish when his people came back. And guess what? When his people started coming back, they started farming, t tilling the land. It started flourishing. And now if you go back to Israel right now, it is like a Garden of Eden. Israel actually supplies vegetables to Europe. That's how prosperous they are. And so, and so what we're saying is God's people started coming back to the land and then in 1948 they became a nation again. That was one of the major prophecies that we're living in the last days. Why? Because now Jesus can come back when the nation comes back, builds their temple, then he can come back. So what happened with all this, right? Well, all this, the Jews started doing all this and then guess what? The Arabs said, oh, we like what they're doing. So they started moving in. And some of them, lived in peace with the Jews. They loved it. So listen, when I'm talking about Hamas and Palestine, there are Christian Palestinians. And we're not talking about them. There are innocent people that are there, but the majority hate Israel and they want them dead. So we pray, when we pray for protection, for God to protect the innocent and the Christians and those that, that do you know, want to live in peace with the Jews. But there's, a terrorist group is running the place. You can't do a peace treaty with a terrorist group. So that's what Israel wants to do. They said they had enough. They know, they, now they understand. We, they gave them Gaza. They understood we can't live with them. They, they want us dead. How can you live with somebody that wants you dead? So they want to obliterate Hamas and everything before. I, I, personally, I think they're going to end up taking it over. Because there's, there's not going to be. There, listen, people. There's not going to be in peace until the Prince of Peace comes back. So all that for this. I say, brethren, time is short. So that from now on, even those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though they, not, they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who buy as they do, they do not possess. And those who use this world as not misusing it. For why? The form of this world is what? Passing away. The form of this world is is passing away. Now, let, let's break this up. I want you to show it in the CEV and so forth. So, he's saying, listen, we're living at a time that time, Paul's saying time is short. So I'm bringing this to you because as I was reading this, it's like God was speaking to me. You, you got to let your people know it's this time now too. Time is short. Jesus is coming soon. So we need to begin to live this way. We need to begin to simplify our lives. Don't get too caught up with this world. Listen, let's read CV. My friends, what I mean is that the Lord will soon come and it won't matter if you're married or not. Right? It will be all the same if you are crying or laughing or if you're buying or completely broke. It will, be, uh, it will make any difference how much good you are getting from this world or how much you like it. This world as we know it is passing away. Look at the NLT. I'm going to say a couple things here, but let me read it. But let me say this, dear brothers and sisters. The time that remains is very short. So from now on, here's, here it is. Look at this. Those with wives should not focus only on their marriage. Listen. So remember, he's talking to the Corinthians. They were asking questions about marriage and all this stuff like that. But he says, but you know what? Let me tell you something. He says, time is short. And the way you live, even concerning your marriage... Some of you are, are you, you know, some are not, but some are so caught up in just on their marriage, and that's all their focus. Some people are caught up in their grieving of a lost one, and that's all their focus. Some are caught up in rejoicing in all the blessings they have, and that's all their focus. And some are caught up in all the possessions and the things that this world offers, and they're caught up in making money and all this other stuff, and that's all their focus. All those things are good, but if your focus is just on those things and God's not first, and guess what? Then that's where you're out of focus. So is he saying don't grieve for your love? Well, that, please miss, don't misunderstand me. That's not what he's saying. He's saying we're living in days. Listen, those of you who lost loved ones, guess what? If the Lord is coming soon, that means you're going to see your loved one very soon. Come on, I'm going to see my mama pretty soon. She went to home be with the Lord in 2018. And guess what? Every day that passes, I'm one day closer to seeing my mom again. I said, I'm one day closer to seeing my loved one again. Those of you lost spouses, those of you lost kids, you're one day closer to seeing them again. Amen? So it's, he didn't say don't grieve. He says just don't let that be your focus. Because the time is short. 
Let's finish that in the NLT. My friends, what I mean is the Lord will come soon, and it won't matter if you're married or not. Actually, that's CV. Give me the NLT, Sally. If you can throw me back, back to the NLT. Because, yeah, we started the NLT, but we didn't finish it, I don't think. Right? NLT. Yeah, we have started the NLT, but we didn't finish it. Notice, should not focus only on their marriage, but then go to verse, uh, the next verse, 30 from there if you can, on the next one. Those who weep or who rejoice, who buy things, should not be what? Here's the point. Don't be so absorbed by their weeping or their joy or their possessions. That doesn't say don't grieve. It doesn't say don't, don't, don't enjoy some things. See what I'm saying? There's a balance there. It doesn't say don't, don't be blessed by your marriage and all that. That's not, he says don't get so absorbed with it that, that you're, you're over-focusing on it. Or listen, or their joy or their possessions. Amen? So caught up on what you have. Next verse. Those who use the things of the world should not become what? Attached to them. You see the point? They'll become attached to them. For this world as we know it will soon what? See people, time is short. Things are not going to continue the way they are in this world. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I, you know, even if you don't believe in Bible prophecy and that the Lord is coming soon, all you have, I tell people, look, even if you don't believe in all this Bible prophecy stuff, all you have to do is look at the world and all it takes is one idiot to get a hold of an atomic bomb, a nuclear bomb. And boom, that'll, <laughs> that'll start a, a, a steps of, you know, it, it'll, it'll, everything will, like, dominoes will start falling and we would destroy ourselves. So don't you think God knew, <laughs> I'm going to have to come back by this time because <laughs> man is to a place where he can destroy himself. So right there should wake you up, man. Look at, look at the evil that we just saw, uh, uh, the Holocaust, the evil that we saw. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we're entering an evil time. We're entering perilous times, Paul said. Amen? And, and in fact, can you, can you put that, uh, Sally, go ahead and put it in the TBT first, then the message from the top. Look at this. I'm saying in different, trans I want you to see it. My friends, what I mean is this. The urgency of our times means that from now on, those who have wives should live as though without them. Verse 30. And those who weep should forget their tears. And those who rejoice will have no time to celebrate. Even if the Diamondbacks win the World Series, Pastor? Maybe celebrate a little bit. Right? But I'm not so caught up in it that if the Diamondbacks do lose and don't win, Yorari, yorari. Yorari, yorari. Right? Right? Why? Because I'm on the winning team already. Jesus Christ is the winner. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And all I do is win, win, win. Because <laughs> I believe in Jesus. I'm a winner, not a whiner. Nor a 49er. I think. Anyway. <laughs> oh, keep, keep it clean, keep it clean. And listen. <laughs> and those who weep, again, and, and those who purchase items will have no time to enjoy them. Wow. Next verse, verse 30. We are to live as those... See, here, it's the attitude, people. We are to live as those who live in the world system but are not absorbed by it. For the world as we know it is quickly passing away. That's my point. Don't get too absorbed in this world. Listen, you see this with us that are getting older. You know, uh, now I'm in li living in my 51s. Actually, no. When I, was, when I turned 31, I'm forever 21. When I was 41, I'm forever 31. When I'm 51, I was forever 41. Now I'm 61, going on 62, so I'm forever 51, right? They should have a 51 store, forever 51. Anyway, so when you get older, and I'm sure you've seen this, those of us that have gotten older, it's, my wife had brought it up, you know, you know, she wants a smaller house. She doesn't want to clean or whatever. You start getting rid of things. When you know your time is getting shorter, it's like, why do I need this anymore? You get rid of it. You, you start, how many can attest to that? You start downsizing when you get older, right? Why? You don't have as much time anymore. You don't have time to do this, do that, do that. So you, what do you do? You, what, you simplify and, and what? 
do the things that really matter the most. Come on now. Come on. Spending time with the family. You want to see the kids. You want to see the grandkids. Those are the things that mean more to you when you don't have as much time left. Well, guess what? That's what Paul is trying to have us as an attitude. Whether you're young or old, we should have that attitude. Our time is short, so we need to simplify our life. Why? You know what he was telling them? He's saying, those of you that are married, you're distracted with what you have to do in life. You're taking care of your husband, doing all these other things. So those that are married, those of you that are single, you might think, I got it bad. I'm... No. He says, you're blessed. Because why? You, you, you are not distracted with the things of life. Why? Because it's you and you and Jesus. Amen. And amen. And you can go whenever you want. You don't have to ask, you know, your boss where you have to go. Or tell you what to do. No honey do's. Amen? So, so, he's, so, so the point is, is, look, I'm not trying to put a, something on you or hem you in. The point is, I want you to be the least distracted so that you can fulfill God's will for your life. Listen, you can get so caught up with the things of the world. It is so easy to get caught up. And in fact, look, can you put the, uh, um, the message? I love the way the message puts it. Listen, I, don't, I, don't, I, I do want to point out, friends, that the time is of essence. There is no time to waste. So don't, here's the point, don't complicate your lives unnecessarily. See, a lot of us, we complicate our lives. We got our, we got our hands in too many things. Listen, N-O, say it after me, no. No is a good word. Some of you, all you are are yes people. Amen? It's good to, you know, if you can, don't overstretch yourself. And, oh, I can't. Focus on what's the most important. Listen, married couples, that's important. Sometimes you just have to say no. Yeah, but it's prima, it's my cuñada, and it's the party from my second cousin. From my... No. <laughs> I mean, I want to be there for everybody, but sometimes you have to say no. Right? Listen, there's no time to waste. Don't complicate your lives unnecessarily. Keep it what? That's my sermon. That's what I'm talking about. Simplify, for time is short. In marriage, in grief, in joy, in whatever, even in ordinary things. Listen, ladies, your daily routings of shopping. I don't like this message. Some ladies are saying, I don't like this message. No, people are different. Some ladies like shopping, some don't. My wife doesn't really like shopping that much. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> you wouldn't like it if you were living during the Old Testament times and you were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, ladies. Why? Because God says he kept their shoes from ever wearing out. You had to wear the same shoes for 40 years. <laughs> and the garments didn't wear out either. That was super, listen, that was supernatural. Their garments didn't wear out and their shoes didn't wear out. I'm believing God for a miracle today. <laughs> Father, I pray for our spouses' clothes never to wear out, their shoes never to wear out. It's a miracle. Some of you got dozens, hundreds. Purse, a, a purse for every dress. Shoes for every dress. Keep looking forward. I'm talking about the, the Philippian, what's her name? From the Philippines. She's the one that had so many shoes. Yeah. Come on, I, I, gotta, I gotta get going. So look at this, let's finish this up. Listen, Dear, deal as sparingly as possible with the things of the world that the world thrusts on you. Why? This world as you see it is fading away. Come on now, it's fading away. It's fading away. So here's, here's, here's my point. It's time to simplify your life for time is short. It's time to keep things simple. And so I want to challenge you this morning. Are there things in your life that you need to get rid of? Listen to me. Are there things in your life that you need to get rid of that take up too much of your time which you could use to do God's will for your life? You know, I've tried, you know, and, and hey, I'm speaking to myself too. The first thing I do when I get up every morning, my wife will tell you, it, it's become a habit. I, I, that's just, now, days that I don't do it, my days don't go very well. But every morning when I get up, I'm either going to get up, take a drink of water, let the dog out, and, uh, and read my word. Get up, 
I read a chapter from the, a psalm or a proverb from the Old Testament, uh, or, and then something in the other books in the Old Testament, and then a chapter in the New Testament. Sometimes, again, sometimes I may be in a rush, I don't have time, I may all just read the Old Testament, go to my different translations, so if something pops out of me, and that's what happened on this scripture here, that I just, I was reading and looking at it, it just hit me, like it, hit, it started hitting me, hitting me. And, and again, I don't do my devotions to get a message, I really don't. I do that on another time. I just get for me to be fed. But God did, I sense God speak to me. You need to share that with your people. Time is short. Time's of essence, so simplify. And so, and so after that, then I'll go and either walk and pray. I don't, I don't kneel and pray. I like to walk and pray, and I'll do my prayers. Amen? And uh, sometimes, because I've been working here, I'll, come, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll, I'll read my word, eat, and then come here, and then I do my walking and praying, especially on Mondays when I'm praying for you all. I'm walking down, down you know, a mile this way and a mile back this way I'm, when I'm praying. And that's why, so it's become a habit for me. And the days that I do it, I mean, things go smoothly, whatever. If I do, hardly ever miss a day, but if I do, oh, you can sense it. It's just like nothing. I, I start getting frustrated. I was like, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Things aren't going right. It's like I don't have the grace for the day. Why? Because when you put the Lord first and you simplify, everything else will go smooth. Listen, guess what you're doing? You're putting God first by coming to church on Sunday, the first day of the week. And guess what? The rest of your week will be blessed. You give, what, a portion of your funds to the Lord. Why? First fruits, and the rest of your finances will be blessed. See, Jesus was the firstborn from the dead, and we're the others that are born again. It's the principle of first. Always, as you put God first. Listen, our youth are called G1, God first. But I told them, don't focus on seeking God first. Focus on what? He, he, we love Him. Why? Because He loved us first. It's God's love that came first, and therefore I love him and put him first. Are right, you see the difference? And so forth. So, so are there things that, see, they could be considered good things too. It could be, like I said, it could be boating, shopping, Facebook, Instagram, sports, clutter. Maybe you have too much stuff. Amen? It's time to get rid of some stuff. Why? Are they, is it occupying a lot of your time? That you could be doing something for the Lord, reading your word or doing something else? Come on, or serving God at church? Come on. I mean it. I, I know I'm, I'm sharing some things they may not, you may not like. Even, even good stuff like that. Even nowadays, we know, listen parents, if your kids are always doing something, but you're not able to bring them to church, you went too far. You went too far. If you're taking your kids away from church, yeah, but they got this event and they got that. I'm sorry. You went too far. I'm your, pa I'm your pastor, so I love you. I'm going to tell you the truth in love. I remember even Joseph Prince said this to his people. Listen, if you really want to be on church on Sunday, believe God for a job where you don't have to work on Sunday. If that's your desire to be in church on Sunday, God will give you a better job if that's really your desire. Amen? See, because time is short. We're running out of time. That, ain't, that stuff that you're focusing so much ain't going to matter when the Lord, you know, with, with what's happening in the world. And so I believe, look, notice, i, I got to start wrapping this up. 2 Timothy 3.1. We are living in perilous times. And that's why I feel led to say, guys, time is short. Start simplifying your life. What are things that you could... Simplify. Again, I'm talking to myself. There's things too that I, I'm, I'm work, I need to simplify so that I can focus more on what God... Notice what it says. Know this, that in the last days, what? Perilous times will come. Listen, people, what just happened in Israel is terrible and it's evil and it's demonic. I saw it. And those of you think that... It, listen, young people, don't listen to the lies. Those of you think that it didn't happen, even the Secretary of State was shown pictures of the babies that were decapitated and killed and slaughtered, 40 babies uh, in Israel that were slaughtered and decapitated. Tied up children that were tied up and burned on a pile, even some that were hugging each other while they were burning them. What we see, again, listen people, let me go to the spiritual side of it. What's happening, it's a spiritual fight. And it all started back with Abraham when he had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. The Arabs come from Ishmael. The Jews come from Isaac. God promised to give the land of Israel to the Jews. 
But God said, but Abraham, I'm also going to bless Ishmael, and they're going to have their land of Edom and other places like that. So God blessed them too. But the promise that would bring Jesus Christ into the world was through the Jews. See, the devils, why? What did God tell the devil when, when Adam and Eve sinned? The seed that comes from you is going to bruise your head, devil. Take your authority away. So the devil know, that knows that the Jews came back to the land. <gasps> Jesus is coming back soon. He's going to, I'm in trouble. Time is running out. And so really what it is, it's a spiritual battle. It's anti-Semitism is satanic. Why? Because the Arabs have always been what? Jealous of the Jews because the promise that was made. Uh, so, and listen, but the Arabs got most of the land. And the Jews only got a little portion. So it's a fight, and that's why, why such hatred for the Jews? Why the Holocaust? Why to do things, to slit, a woman was slit with her baby and pulled out? See, people don't, I got to share that because it did happen. You can't deny it. And it, oh, see, I, I see no evil, so I don't think about it. Well, it did happen. We're living in crazy perilous times. And listen, they've already, this has already been shared. I'm not the only one who knows this. They believe there are terror cells that have already are starting to build up in America that have come from the southern border. There's one minister that's like a prophet. He says, there's 12 of them already. And they're preparing for when the time is right. But here's the good news. Before the worst come, we're going to be out of here because the rapture of the church. Why? God will never judge the righteous with the unrighteous. He has to get his church out. Just like he got Enoch out, he translated Enoch, got him out before the flood came. He's going to get the church out before judgment falls on the earth. So that's the good news. And listen, there's people that are now believing that we're going to go through the tribulation. Listen. And why? Because they're listening to other extra, extra stuff that's extra biblical. Listen, we have to stick to the Bible no matter what the culture says or anybody else says. And like I tell you, if I preach something that's, that's, that goes against the Bible, I give you permission to leave too. T tell me, somebody tell me if I'm going wrong. Amen? Amen? I want you to speak up and tell me if what I'm not sharing is the word of God. We have to stick, why? Great deception in these last days. Perilous times, that, that word means in different difficult times. Violence Violent periods of time, perilous times and great distress and trouble. And here's the sad thing. We got universities that are excited and have, have students that are celebrating Hamas and what they did. That's wrong. Wrong. There should be no, in fact, if you believe that, then I think you, your citizenship should be taken away. You're not really a U.S. citizen. Because that's terrorism. Amen. That's evil. That's wicked. Amen? Amen? Even though, like I said, even the Secretary of State, uh, uh, and, and I think they showed it to Biden too. So I thank God that Biden at least stood up and is standing for Israel right now, even though I know some from his party are trying to pull him away, the ones that are really you know, on the left side are trying to pull away, but at least he stood with them. And Blinken, he's a Jew. And they showed him pictures, so he's, I, I think Pastor Andrew was telling me he was in tears. Or, was it Blinken? that was in tears, or somebody was seeing what they saw. It was evil. Amen. We're living in times of great defense. So, number two, number one, simplify for time is short. Number two, invest in eternal things. Don't invest all your time in things that won't mean anything soon. Why? Look at 1 John 2, 15 and say, I'm almost done. Do not love the world or the things of the world. Why? If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, it's not saying... That it's not saying that, that you don't love the Father. It's saying you don't understand how much God the Father loves you. The love of the Father. You don't have that revelation yet. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is what? Of the world. And verse 17 says, and the world is what? Is passing away. And the lust of it. But he who does what? The will of God. What's God's will for you to believe in Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment? He who does the will of God abides what? See, we're going to abide forever. We're going to last. Amen? Because we believe in Jesus. And then finally, be patient and establish your heart. Look at James 5.8. 5, 
You also be patient. Establish your hearts. Why? For the coming of the Lord is what? At hand. Are you seeing that? The coming of the Lord is at hand. And that's why 1 Peter 5.10, look, we may be suffering in this world, but, but, but he says, may the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, what's he going to do? See, you, you can't establish yourself on your own. God's going to help you. What is, what is God going to do? After you've suffered a while, he's going to perfect, he's going to establish, God's going to strengthen you and settle you. Come on now. And that's why finally Hebrews 13, 8 and 9, Jesus Christ is what? See, people, Jesus doesn't change. So for us to yield to the culture of this world and say, we got to, but it's the right thing, Pastor. No, I can still love somebody and tell them, no, I love you, but you, what your, your action is still wrong. And I'll continue to love you and pray for you, but what you do, I cannot accept. Amen. Jesus Christ, why? Jesus doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. Therefore, next verse, verse 9, don't be... So if, so if Jesus doesn't change, you too don't be carried about with various and strange doctrines and teachings. And again, I'm hearing it now. Some Christians don't believe in the rapture anymore. They think you're going to go through the tribulation. I don't know about you, I'm taking the first bus. <laughs> you want to go... Look, if you believe you're going to go through the tribulation... I pray, listen, if you're really saved, you're not. If you're not saved, you will go through it. So, it is good that the heart be established, what? By grace. That's why I teach so much on the grace and the love of God. You need a revelation of His grace. That's what changed you. It's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. It's God's goodness that will change you. Amen? Not with foods which have not profited those who have been... He's saying foods, why? Because the Jews were caught up in the ritual washings of the temple and all that stuff. And Paul's saying, no, it's the grace of God that's going to change you. Amen? Sin will not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but you're under grace now. So what does that mean? That I can go sin? No, it means that if you do sin, run back to God. He is gracious, He loves you, and get back up and keep winning and keep running in victory. For the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 10 37 time. The Lord's not going to tarry. In a little while, He who is coming will come and He's not going to hold on. So listen, I know I offered you a challenge and you can write it in your notes there. What are things that you need to simplify in? What are some things maybe you need to, you know what? I need to get rid of some. Some of you, you got too much clutter, like peanut butter. <laughs> or it could be toys. It could be things that you have. Amen? If every Sunday you're out on the lake, then I would say, hey, are you having a service out there? Are you winning fish or are you winning... G it's all <laughs> are you fishing? Are you a fisher of fish or a fisher of men? Both are good. In order. In order. See, am I saying stop grieving for your love? Am I saying stop working on your marriage? No. Don't misunderstand what he said. He says because of the time we're living in, simplify your life and don't go overboard on these other things. Even with your kids. Look, you can only entertain your kids so, many, so much. Bring them to the youth over here. They got games they can play over here learn about the Lord. Come on. Father, thank you for your word. I pray, Father God, that your word will just be embedded in their souls of what Paul shared. For the time is short, and it's time to simplify our lives. Thank you, Father. Help us to always, in all things, put you first. For the time is running out. In Jesus' name. And listen, I want to, I want if you need prayer this morning, I want to open it up real quick. Just, just a few more minutes, just, you know. The food's right there. You don't have to run to the restaurant. The food is right there waiting for you. You don't have to run to the restaurant. Amen? Amen? I encourage you, man. When's the last time you had good fellowship with people? Get back there. Pastor, I don't have any money to buy it. I'll buy it for you if you don't have any money. Honey, you got any money? Anyway. But <laughs> just, you know, when's the last time you fellowship with other believers? And just, you know, it's time. It's time to get to know our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And spend time. So if you need prayer this morning, as I go up and sing one more, why don't you come on up and receive whatever it is you need this morning. You need, 
you know, you're dealing with something, maybe, hey, maybe you want somebody to pray with you, to God to help you and grace you to get rid of some of the things that we talked about. <laughs> you you want to make a, a, a choice and a commitment, you know, and, and, and so forth. Again, this is between you and God, but if you, you need somebody to pray with you, to help you, maybe you're dealing with a big decision you need to make, but you need help and you need prayer, somebody to join with you. Why don't you come up as we, as we, as we sing. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, my Jesus.